Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I've mentioned in my recent Italy haul that I kind of want to do like a whole dedicated video on all my Ramoa luggages. I have, as you can see, kind of built an unintentionally really colorful collection over the years and I have some thoughts. I wanted to share my honest review with you from the past few years of solely using Ramoa luggages every time I travel. So I thought I'd start off this video by giving you a rundown of each piece like the material, size, and color if I can remember it correctly. So let's get right into it. As you can see, I have four cabin sizes and two bigger like check-in luggage size. This is the oldest one in the collection. I say the collection, not my collection because technically this isn't mine. It was a gift from me to my boyfriend three years ago. Guys, this was, I think, a little less than $700 at the time. And that's actually one of the reasons why I really wanted to do this video because I don't know if you guys noticed, but Ramoa has been increasing their prices. I mean, just like with everything else, throughout the world, they have been increasing their prices so much, like it's kind of painful. I feel like every time I go on their website, I see like a $50 increase, like a $100 increase. That's why I wanted to bring this video to you guys because these things are getting really expensive. But anyways, this is technically not mine, but I have stolen it from him many, many times. So I have used this as well. And at the time I didn't have any remote luggages. And also the only carry on I had was much smaller than this. So I use this quite a few times actually, but as you can see, it is in still really good condition. I think it's such a beautiful color. It's kind of low key. This one is one of the newer additions to the family. This is also in the cabin size, not cabin light, not cabin small. It's just cabin. All four of these actually are just plain cabin. This color is called Arctic Blue. And as you can see, it is beautiful. And the main difference is obviously the material. This is part of the classic line, so it is much heavier, which I will get into later. Oh my god, in the video, <laughs> that was a lot. You can hear it, it's the classic aluminum material, unlike the polycarbonate, which is right there, the other blue. And then moving on to the rest of the collection, which are all mine. This one, I don't know how much you'll be able to see in the video, but it is, I think, one of the best colors ever. This is the dark green one, part of the essential line, so polycarbonate, much lighter, and also in the cabin size. And then this one right here. I would say this was kind of what started my love for Ramoa. Actually, no, it was this color right there. The pink one and the lavender one right there, I bought last year. These were super limited, like seasonal colors, so they like sold out pretty fast, especially this one right here it was a mess to get this one i kind of wish i got more in this color though because oh, that is so nice you guys have probably seen these two quite a bit in my pack with me videos i have traveled a lot with them and you guys have probably noticed these quite a bit on the thumbnails <laughs> of my pack with me videos the color of this it's coming off a lot more orange and warm on camera but in person it's more of a cooler pink it's like a true pink very very beautiful but when i first received it um i remember feeling like Wow, this is a lot more pink than I thought, but it's so gorgeous. This one, as you can probably tell already, is one of the classic line. Have I been saying classic? I meant original. This is part of the original line, so the aluminum uh, material. It's really, really heavy, and I believe the color is called... Hi. Sorry, my dog came to say hi. Um, the color was called Pink Quartz. So that's it for all the cabin sizes. And then moving on to the back one. In my what I got for my birthday video from last year, you guys have probably seen me unbox this um, in Paris. This. It was some like French lavender word, I think. The color is beautiful. As I mentioned just now, I really wish I got this in more like sizes in this color because it's just so pretty. So, so cute. It is one of the most like delicious, juicy lavender color. They really nailed this color. It's so amazing. This is the polycarbonate one, the essential line. So it's really light and the size is check-in large. So it's one of the like rectangle shaped ones, but thin on the side. And I have some thoughts about this size. I'll get into that. For reference, I am 5'3". So when I stand up, it comes up to like right here. It's pretty big. It does fit a lot. 
And then this is the newest addition to the family. I got I got this in Milan. I had never intended on getting a white one. I originally wanted this size in the green, but they were all out of it in Milan and I really needed a suitcase. So I couldn't get it. And since then, which has been about like a month now, they have increased the price by 50 bucks. Like, why do I notice these things? <laughs> but anyways, this is again, the polycarbonate um, essential line, essential line and the size is trunk plus. So it's more of a square shape. And when I stand up, it comes up a little higher or actually is it the same height? Oh yeah, comparing these two, this is wider and it's much more narrow, but it's like a square, like a thin rectangle. Get the difference, right? Okay, now that you guys know each piece in the size, material, and color, I want to kind of get into all the pros and cons. So, first off, the weight. You guys probably have guessed already that the polycarbonate, the essential line, it's extremely light. I keep saying classic, I meant the original, the original line, because of the aluminum, it's so heavy. And that actually creates quite a bit of an issue because number one, these are all carry-ons, right? So when you're traveling with it, unless you're checking this in, you have to put this in the over bin. If you have the aluminum one, like good luck trying to put this over your head, especially if you're short, if you're not like the strongest person. And I am such a heavy like packer as well. I need like everything with me. I hate checking my bag. So I like to stuff my carry-on with all the stuff that I think I'm going to need. So when I'm traveling with this, I always have to ask for help because I almost broke my neck and my back trying to like put this over my head. So never again. I don't even like try anymore. I just like look for someone that looks really strong or like the flight attendant for help. Putting this over your head is actually a lot easier. Um, it just depends on like how much you're packing. And issue number two related to the weight is when you are checking your bag, there is a weight limit. And because of the material, it already takes up or it already weighs quite a bit more than the polycarbonate. So you're going to hit that weight limit a lot quicker. Another big difference that I have noticed is that you can't stuff too much in the aluminum one. So all the polycarbonate ones have a zipper, right? The aluminum line, however, has these, like these lock clasp looking thing. So when you're trying to close this, instead of just like zipping it up, you have to like make sure everything locks properly. Because if you don't do that, your bag will not close. Every time I have to pack this bag, I mean like I know my limitations, I can't even put that much stuff in. But let's say you're putting like bulky clothes, like bulky shoes, like whatever. With this, I can literally just like use a ton of force and just like squeeze everything in, right? Because it's a zipper. But with this, there is so much you can do. Every single time I had to pack or like kind of overstuff it a little bit, just a little bit, I had to sit on my suitcase, like literally sit on my suitcase and try to close it. Once you get one locked in, you can kind of use that like momentum to lock the second one, but it is kind of a lot of work. However, I will say with the zipper ones, if you stuff it to the brim, like way too overstuffed, sometimes the lock won't work. I've had instances where they would just pop right off. It wouldn't even lock because it's so stuck. So keep that in mind, especially if you are going to check this bag in. It might work at first, but when you check it in, you know, it goes through like the conveyor belt and like who knows what they do with that. It just gets banged up left and right. So there's a chance that like the lock would just pop out and like everyone can access it. So I would say you can pack a bit more in the essential line compared to the original. And then the last comparison I want to talk about is all the dents and like getting your suitcases like all banged up. You see these scratches, right? I don't know if you will be able to see it, but there's like a dent here. And I have never checked this bag in. As opposed to this, which is the oldest one in the collection, right? I got this like three years ago now and we have used this a lot. And you can see like just scratches, but because the color is so dark, you can barely tell. So the aluminum one obviously is going to dent a lot and you can tell 
really easily because of how shiny it is it's going to get banged up i mean there's a reason why they sell those stickers and then this one all these like scratches these were actually from the freaking cement my taxi driver was taking this out from the trunk it just fell to the ground like the first time i used this bag and right away i just got all these like really like painful looking scratches and to be honest like yeah a part of me kind of died inside <laughs> seeing that but i had to remind myself that you know like i bought this as a luggage like it's not gonna look perfect all the time and then my favorite one i mean i've only used this like a couple times now and because of the color you can't even see it and it's so beautiful like i mentioned it's like my favorite color of the year i feel like this was my first ramoa check-in luggage there's no way around it i can never take this with me on a flight you know so i had to check this in and it goes through the conveyor belt once and it just comes out looking really rough and again like a part of me died that day <laughs> but i have kind of gone over it like it's fine it tends to all the scratches tend to be focused on the size all these corners right here they tend to come out with big black marks but i have noticed that just alcohol wipes like clorox wipes a lot of it does come off so you just got to be really diligent and just persistent but if you keep like rubbing it because of the alcohol it does remove quite a bit but just know that with any check-in luggage it'll never look perfect and then i want to kind of compare the two check-in luggage sizes that i have this again is the check-in large and this is the trunk plus i've heard a lot of mixed reviews from different people like friends and stuff and some people don't like the trunk because it is an odd shape like this kind of acts as like a lid and then you get to fill up this entire space and then put a little bit more up here on the lid and then like close it whereas the check-in large or just the check-in line the zipper goes down the middle so it's kind of like a half and half it's like the traditional like cabin sizes too when you just open it, it's like half and half so you might be a little bit more used to it but after using both of them i have kind of moved on to the trunk size i never thought i would like it because i was always kind of like what the hell does the lid do you know like it's kind of like an awkward size and honestly i love the trunk I love the trunk. When you're buying a check-in luggage, it's because you have a lot of stuff. You gotta like check things in. They tend to be like heavy duty or just a lot of like miscellaneous things, right? Especially when I go abroad, I like to buy a lot of like chocolate snacks, just like little things here and there, right? And they tend to be overstuffed. And because it's a polycarbonate, I tend to put a lot of like heavy stuff in there too. So when you're packing this, obviously it's like on the floor, like all like spread out, you know, like open in half. All the Ramoa luggages do come with that divider thing that you can use with like those um, Velcro little things to like strap everything in but even with that because it's a huge like luggage every time i have to like close it sometimes some things on the side kind of fall out it's kind of annoying and even when you're unpacking when you just open everything up sometimes like things just fall out and then compared to that this one the trunk plus you don't really have that issue because this lid portion right here it's all zippered so you can just stuff whatever and just like zip it up and you're good to go like nothing falls out it's actually pretty genius so you got to be strategic about like what you're you know stacking on top of each other so i don't like to pack my stuff if it's like precious like leather stuff like i don't want them to get squished especially on the bottom so i tend to you know be strategic about it you gotta think guys <laughs> you gotta think about it yeah this is my very first trunk plus and i'm honestly like in love with it i love this size so much and one last thing i promise it's the last thing because of this square shape it's a lot easier to put your stuff on top I mean, granted, like you have to check in your luggage anyway, so you're not carrying this with you at all times. Like as soon as you go to the airport, you know, you check your bag in. So you don't have to carry this around, but when you do have to, it's so easy to just put your tote bag or like whatever stuff that you have on top because there's more like surface 
a surface area to put stuff on top. So yeah, that was my honest review on all the Rimmel luggages that I have tried and used over the years, mainly from the Essential and Original lines in like a couple different sizes and colors. Now you might be wondering, is Rimmel really worth the price? And to be honest, I really can't answer that for you because it's a very personal you know, choice and decision. And clearly I thought it was worth it <laughs> to have this many, right? In terms of the quality, I've never had any issues with it. And I feel like the big reason why people go for Rumoa is because of the implications. Like we want to travel in style, right? Because if you're only thinking about you know, practicality and I just need a bag that will carry all my stuff, then you're probably not even thinking of Ramoa. There's so many brands out there that are way more affordable with like mid-range price points or even lower. You can literally get one from Amazon. With any luxury products, I don't think you're only paying for the quality. You're paying for their marketing, the brand name, the, you know, I guess like a status symbol, so to speak. And that's why if we're solely talking about the quality, like spending over a thousand on a cabin, is that worth it? Like, I don't know. You are buying the brand, you're buying the color, the design. And I personally love anything with ridges like that. That's why even my phone case is from Ramoa. It's like so banged up, but I think this is the best phone case ever. And I've had it for a little over a year, never took it off even once, and it's still going so strong. So I really do believe in their quality, but I don't think all my money went into their quality. You know what I mean? So yeah, with any luxury purchases, it really just boils down to whatever you can justify. But I hope that this video was useful and and helpful and then you guys enjoy this comparison thank you as always for tuning in and i will see you in my next video bye